Charizard is the most iconic Pokemon of all time, with the exception of Pikachu. Even the most casual Pokemon fans like it and may even consider it their favorite. Across the world, people adore this well-designed, fire-breathing dragon. But it's not a dragon. You've probably seen the memes. The winged reptile that breathes fire isn't a dragon, while the goofy tree, piece of sushi, and small slug are. Charizard's had Dragon Rage in its level up moveset since Gen 2, and Dragon Claw since Gen 4. It clearly makes sense as a dragon type, so much so that one of its two mega evolutions is a dragon type. But since mega evolution is gone, so is dragon type Charizard. Although there is terrestrialization, but who knows how long that's gonna stick around. Many think it's cruel to bar Charizard from its dragon type potential. Why don't they just change it now? They've changed Pokemon types between generations before. Why not, when Gen 10 rolls around, make Charizard a fire dragon type? Well, for starters, unintended, it would severely imbalance the type trio. Regardless of what dual types are added as they evolve, the water starter always has stab super effective moves against the fire starter. And same for grass over water and fire over grass. For example, Empoleon gained the steel type, making it no longer weak to grass. So to keep things consistent, Torterra gained the ground type, which it could use to hit Empoleon for super effective damage. Reversals can happen, such as Infernape's fighting type beating Empoleon's steel, but the original advantages are virtually always preserved. The only exceptions are the dragon type mega evolutions, Charizard X and Sceptile, but those transformations are temporary and have since been removed. If Charizard became Fire Dragon, it would no longer be weak to water. Blastoise's ice type coverage would not work either, like it could for Swampert against Mega Sceptile. In fact, the only types Fire Dragon Charizard would be weak to would be Ground, Rock, and Dragon. Ground and Rock would never make sense for Blastoise, and while Dragon could, it would be a stretch. The only Dragon-like thing about Blastoise is the fact that it's a reptile. But there's another big reason why Charizard is not a Dragon-type. Flying-type makes just as much sense. It learns a variety of Flying-type moves, including those that don't have to do with simply having wings, like Air Slash or Hurricane. And it flies. Charizard is far from the only Pokemon that has this problem of three different types suiting them. I and others have made videos listing some of those Pokemon. However, I believe there's a specific reason why this occurs so often, and this video is going to discuss that. Since Charizard is the most famous Pokemon that has this problem, I've dubbed it the Charizard Paradox. It doesn't technically fit the definition of a paradox, but like, it sounds really cool, so um, the name is staying. In Avatar The Last Airbender, there are four elements that benders can control. Water, earth, fire, and air. There are subsets of those elements with different properties as well, such as ice, plants, lightning, or metal. And in a different universe, like Pokemon, it's not a large leap of logic to categorize those separately. But all of them are substances or materials that the benders can control so benders are categorized based on what they can manipulate. But in the animal kingdom, creatures are categorized differently. This is to be expected since animals don't have superpowers. Well, I guess they can do things that we would consider to be superpowers, like mantis shrimp, oh my God. But like, they can't lift water with their minds. Animals are instead categorized by their physical characteristics. Mammals are warm-blooded and have live births. Reptiles are cold-blooded and lay eggs. Birds are warm-blooded and lay eggs. There are more intricacies to this, but you get the picture. Animals are characterized by what they are, not by what they can control. But then we look at Pokemon, which are animals with powers. So they are categorized both by what they can control, which I'm calling the elemental types, and by what their physical characteristics are, which I'm calling anatomical types. The combination of the two is what leads to the Charizard paradox. Ha ha, it is I, Garanti, bye! And dude, I have to tell you, the hideout's cafeteria was shut down! Whoa, health inspectors finally got it? What? No, it's a hideout. They don't know it's there. What do you mean? We've known since the 90s it's under the Celadon game corner. Shh, shut up! But anyways, no, it blew up. There was an electrode mishap. Dang! What are you gonna do for food? Oh, I haven't eaten there in years. It was gross. Instead, I use HelloFresh, the sponsor of today's video. Hello 
HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Simply pick out some delicious recipes on their website, then the pre-portioned ingredients are shipped right to your door. It takes away the stress of meal planning and grocery shopping, which is something I personally do not love, and it's all done at a price that you'll like. Oh, of course, I love HelloFresh too. Cooking stresses me out quite a bit, but with HelloFresh, the process is so much more straightforward and easy and way less stressful. They give you a nice recipe card instead of having to read off of an ad bloated recipe on your phone screen. And of course the food is delicious. Agreed on all fronts. Use our link in the description below or scan the QR code on screen to sign up for HelloFresh and get free breakfast for life. That's one free breakfast item per box as long as your subscription is active. If you sign up with our link specifically, it directly helps us out. He's right. But anyways, did you seriously not know that we knew where the hideout is? What hideout? Who's Team Rocket? Ta-ta! First, let's cover elemental types. The controllable materials and avatar that I mentioned are water, earth, fire, air, ice, plants, lightning, and metal. All of these have a Pokemon type equivalent with the exception of earth, which has two. There are other create control focused Pokemon types as well. Poison type Pokemon generate and wield sludge or venom. Psychic Pokemon manipulate the mind and psychic energy. All of these here are the elemental types, except steel. You see, while some of these elemental types can describe a Pokemon's physical characteristics, like Geodude is a rock type because it is a rock, all of those Pokemon can still control whatever that element is. So a Pokemon made of rocks like Geodude can also generate them from nothing by using Rock Slide or Stone Edge. Fish Pokemon live in the water and are almost always water type, but they can also manipulate it with moves like Water Gun or Surf. However, aquatic animal Pokemon don't have to be water type, such as Hisuian Quillfish, Electros, or Grappaloct. Grass Pokemon are often physically plants, but they're still creating and controlling other plants, such as using Grass Knot to grow grass around the enemy's feet to trip them. However, Steel is different. Virtually every Steel-type Pokemon has metal on its body, and virtually every Steel-type move involves using a metallic part of their body. Iron Tail, Metal Claw, Iron Head, Heavy Slam, Iron Defense, etc. The only exceptions are the very few steel special moves like Flash Cannon or Mirror Shot, which oddly enough involve firing energy or light, not really metal. Because of the nature of this, I'm saying that steel doesn't fit in with the other elemental types, but the rest of them are cut and dry. Okay, except flying, but we'll come back to that. That leads us to the types that are more like animal classification, the anatomical types. Bug-type Pokemon physically are insects or arachnids. Dragon-type Pokemon are usually actual dragons. Normal types tend to be just animal-like Pokemon with no elemental powers that don't fall into the insect, reptile, amphibian, or fish categories. Since insects are bugs, reptiles dragon, and fish and amphibian are water type generally. So normal types are mostly mammals and birds. Or like computer programs, stuff that doesn't fit in anywhere else. Ghost Pokemon are physically ghosts. Fighting Pokemon don't have a specific body type, but they're usually humanoid, and they're skilled in usually melee combat, which is not control of an element. Steel type Pokemon have metallic bodies. Then flying type Pokemon can fly. Again, we'll come back to flying. Dark and fairy are a bit tougher to divide. Dark type usually refers to the Pokemon's disposition, but they also tend to have control over, well, darkness. Fairy types are often fairies or fey adjacent creatures and usually have a kind hearted disposition, but they also manipulate light and magic. I'm putting dark and fairy into a third category that I'm calling middle ground types because they have attributes of both elemental and anatomical types. Flying is also going in this category, but it's significantly more complicated. Flying, of course, deals with the physical act of flying, with moves such as fly or sky drop, or wings that allow the Pokemon to fly, like wing attack or dual wing beat. This aspect of the flying type doesn't care about anything else, but whether the Pokemon can fly and if it has wings. That piece is very anatomical, but the flying type also encompasses elemental control of air. Air Slash, Air Cutter, Tailwind, Hurricane, Aeroblast, all of these moves are controlling air, and while usually learned by flying types, are things that could feasibly be done by a creature that is not flying. In short, 
airbender stuff. Anyone. Although there is an argument to be made that Pokemon are accomplishing this air manipulation, not by elemental control, but by physical means. Gust is often shown as an attack used by the Pokemon flapping its wings, moving the air simply by pushing what's nearby. Air Slash and Air Cutter are almost exclusively learned by Pokemon with wings, so they could be doing the same thing. However, there are some Pokemon that can use these moves that don't have the obvious physical means to do so. Suicune, despite lacking wings, learns both Tailwind and Air Slash, and I don't think its ribbons would be enough to do either of those moves. Hurricane can be learned by Whimsicott and Kingdra, two Pokemon that certainly are not creating high winds by physical means. Therefore, non-physical control of air still applies to the flying type. But there's even a third piece of it, bird stuff. The flying type includes lots of moves that deal with the physical attributes of birds specifically. Feather Dance, Roost, Drill Peck, and Brave Bird being a few examples. These bird moves are often learned by birds that cannot fly, like Blaziken learning Brave Bird or Empoleon learning Drill Peck. It's much like the bug type in this regard. If the attack involves a body part or action that is specific to bugs, like Bug Bite, Infestation, or Spider Web, the move is bug type. In short, the flying type covers the act of flying manipulation of the air, and birds. It would be insane, but you could feasibly divide it into a flying type, and air slash wind type, and a bird type. So that gives us nine elemental types, six anatomical types, and three middle ground types. The fact that types can be categorized like this is what leads to Charizard situations, where three types make sense. If all types were anatomical, three type situations would be basically non-existent. Is it a bug? Then it's a bug type. Is it a dragon? It's a dragon type. If it's one of those things but dead, tack on the ghost type. You would have to have a bug that is also dead and is also good at melee combat for a bug ghost fighting type to make sense. And that's an extremely specific situation which could occur, but it's not gonna happen very often. But then if we only had elemental types, three type situations would still be very rare, albeit not as rare as with the anatomical types only. That's because for a Pokemon to have three types, it has to control three different things. For example, there's only one fire electric Pokemon, Rotom Heat, because a Pokemon would have to control both fire and electricity, a very specific situation. There's not a single poison ice type, and there's only one water fire, because you have to have Pokemon that specifically control both of those things, since their anatomy has little to no impact on their typing. I think the main situations where three types could still make sense in a world with only elemental types involve the poison type, because a lot of animals are venomous, or situations that are rock, ground, and something else. I discussed it in another video about what if there was an earth type, because it is odd that rock and ground are two separate types. But because we have types that describe both what the Pokemon can control and what they physically are, we end up with a lot of situations where a Pokemon can only have two types, but three make sense. Skrelp is an aquatic creature with control of both water and toxins, so it's water poison. But once it becomes more dragon-like, it loses the water type, despite still being aquatic and controlling water. Drapion is a toxic creature that is cruel and can manipulate darkness with moves like Dark Pulse, so it's poison dark but it's also a scorpion, like its pre-evolution Skorupi, and thus bug type would also fit. Gliscor is a burrowing flying scorpion that stings with venom and creates earthquakes, so it could be ground, flying, bug, and poison. Parasect is a mushroom that dispenses toxic spores, indicating grass poison, but it's a mushroom controlling a bug, so bug must also fit. Similarly, Breloom is a mushroom that can poison with its spores, but it's also skilled in melee combat and needs fighting type. Armorouge and Cerulege both control fire, while Armorouge manipulates psychic energy and Cerulege is a ghost. However, they're both wearing metal armor and learn iron defense, so steel could apply as well. And of course, all the Violet Paradox Pokemon, excluding Iron Crown, are made of metal with iron in their name, yet are not steel type, 
because there are other aspects that are relevant to what they can do or what they are. But no type is more commonly a missing third type than flying. When you have a type that covers both the ability to fly and being a bird, it ends up left out a lot. Bird Pokemon like Blaziken, Empoleon, or Decidueye would all make sense as flying types, even though Decidueye is the only one of them that can fly. As for the flight capability piece, that applies to a lot more Pokemon. The ability Levitate makes up for the lack of flying type with a lot of Pokemon, such as Flygon or Latios or Vikavolt, but there are tons of Pokemon that have neither Levitate nor the flying type, despite clearly being capable of flight. In fact, here's a list of a bunch of them. I tried to get all of them, I might have missed them, but these are Pokemon that are not flying type and do not have levitate, despite having clearly visible wings that can make them fly. Beedrill, Venomoth, Dustox, Volbeat, Illumise, Volcarona, Reshiram, Zekrom, Cutiefly, Rabombi, Naganadal, Flapple, Frostmoth, Dreepy, Dracloak, and Dragapult. Okay, those ones are in a grayer area of float versus fly, but like, they are planes. Roaring Moon, Coridon, and Maridon. They both clearly fly outside of battle, although Maridon is levitating in battle. And Pheasantipity. Now, is there anything about this group that jumps out at you? It's okay if not, I'll tell you. Every single one of them, except Pheasantipity, is a bug or dragon type. That's because bug and dragon are the clearest cut anatomical types. Is it a bug? Is it a dragon? If yes, it should have that type. So they are relevant to all of these Pokemon, except Pheasantipity, but also many bugs and many dragons fly. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And so therefore you're gonna have bug and dragon type Pokemon that can fly, like the ones in this group. However, all these Pokemon, except Volbeat and Illumise, Weird that they're not bug flying. Also have some kind of element to cover, like fire with Volcarona or grass with Flapple. So that has to be there too. Levitate could have helped them like it did Vikavolt, but for some reason or another, they didn't go for it. So instead, these clearly visibly flying Pokemon can be hit by ground type moves. Mega Charizard X fits right into this list since it has Tough Claws and not Levitate. Normal Charizard is on the opposite version of this list. It is flying type, but it could have had a different anatomical type instead. Gliscor is similar in that regard. And that creates the paradox. Three types would be too complicated for practical gameplay purposes, so the cap has to stay at two, but when you have a type system that sometimes categorizes creatures based on what bender they would be in Avatar, but then other times based on just what animal is it, but then other times on whether it can fly or not, you end up with a lot of instances of Pokemon missing out on a type that wouldn't make perfect sense for them. Like Charizard missing out on the dragon type. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. It's a bit different than what I normally do, kind of more video essay, but I enjoyed making it, so I hope you enjoyed watching it. There's a video on screen here that YouTube thinks that you will enjoy, so you should check it out. And that is all I have for now. So until next time, big fans, gotta catch them all.